Hey everybody, my name's Ryan, and here at eTrailer we install, test fit, and review a lot of different parts. That way we could try to help answer any questions those of you might have. And that's exactly what we're doing here today on our 2020 Ford F-250. We're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Air Springs. So this is what the airbags are going to look like underneath your truck. And as you can see, they're going to take up that space in between the bottom of your frame rail and the top of your axle tube. So the airbags are actually gonna replace the factory type Johns bumper. And just by looking at this, you can tell it's really not doing much right out of the factory. This is more or less there just to prevent your suspension from bottoming out. So really not giving you any additional support. And as many uh, of you probably know whenever you're towing a super heavy trailer whether it be for work or maybe a camper or even just have a lot of weight in the bed of your truck you can really feel that weight you know your truck's squatting down back here uh, you don't have nearly as much suspension travel or responsiveness and even in the the brakes and the steering you can feel that weight you know kind of wanting to toss you around a little bit and drag you back and the airbags are gonna eliminate a lot of those problems. And that's because they do fill that gap uh, and get everything square again. You know, these are gonna bring your truck back to the factory ride height where it should be, even with all that weight back here. So I did mention, uh, you know, pulling those big heavy trailers, whether it be for work or a camper, let's say. And a lot of times those trailers are either a fifth wheel or a gooseneck. And so we get a lot of people asking if the airbags will work with those hitches. And the answer is yes, this is gonna work with the majority of all those hitches. So really nothing to worry about there. Today we have a great example of that. Our customer actually has a B&W uh, fifth wheel kit on their truck. And as you can see, the airbags aren't going to interfere with it at all. So one thing uh, I do suggest keeping in mind is that the airbags are going to require a little bit of maintenance. They're gonna have a minimum pressure of five PSI and a maximum pressure of 100 PSI. But the maintenance is more or less um, gonna to lean towards that minimum pressure rating. So something to keep an eye on, you always wanna have at least five PSI in the bags. So if you're not using them all the time, sometimes that can be a little inconvenient, especially during colder weather and things like that overnight. So you, you do wanna make sure uh, that you have pressure in the bags. Now, to make life a little bit easier, uh, you can pick up a compressor kit, which will automatically keep that minimum pressure in there for you every time you get in the truck and fire it up. But that compressor kit's also gonna allow you to uh, adjust the bags on the fly too. So makes it a little more convenient. And if I was putting airbags on my own vehicle, I think I'd definitely use a compressor just because it makes it that much easier. Now, with that being said, um, if you're someone that doesn't really do a lot of towing, uh, but still want some additional support and don't really want to have to deal with all that, one of the things you can do is use a, another type of suspension enhancement, whether it be a Timberin or a Sumo Spring. And what those are going to do is more or less going to be a big John Smumper, essentially. It's going to fill that space in and give you that extra support. The downside to those, though, is you're not going to have that adjustability, but uh, like I said, if you're only going to tow every now and again, that's a great option for you and one I could personally live with. I will say I am pretty impressed with the quality of construction. Um, I know personally in the past I've had pretty good luck with airlift. Uh, not too many problems that arise from them. And once you kind of get your hands on the kit, you can see what I'm talking about. Everything feels like it's really well, well made. All the brackets are nice and solid. The airbags themselves are really thick rubber and even just the little things, you know, all the hardware that it comes with and everything else. Now these bags are going to have a 5,000 pound load carrying capacity, uh, but keep in mind that's not going to add the uh, weight carrying capacity to your truck. That's just how much weight the bags themselves can support. One thing I do like about this setup is how everything is gonna be mounted up. There's other kits out there that require you to measure your Johns bumper 
striker pad, which is this piece of metal here. And not every one of these is the same height from the factory. And so depending on where that measurement falls, those other kits may or may not work. So kind of one extra step that you have to think about and figure out if everything's gonna work. And that's not the case with this setup. Regardless on where your striker pad sits, the kit is going to be able to get bolted up and work like it should. So at the end of the day, you know, a kit you really can't go wrong with. These are gonna solve a lot of those issues you were having, whether it be uh, the drivability or just honestly the overall comfort of your truck whenever you're towing your trailer down the road. Now, as far as the installation goes, these really aren't too bad, believe it or not. You don't have to really modify anything like that, uh, any drilling, cutting, nothing really too complicated. So these are relatively straightforward uh, out of the many airbags that I've personally installed. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put them on together now. To begin our installation, what I went ahead and did was just temporarily uh, lower and remove our spare tire. It just gives us a little extra room to work. And then what I've done is used a pole jack here to uh, lift up on the body of our truck. That way it would put a little bit of distance in between our rear axle and our frame. Now, I'm doing it this way because I have a drive-on lift. For those of you at home, what you could do is jack your vehicle up uh, by the frame, and that would allow your tires to hang down and give you that same uh, distance that we need here, this extra working room. With that being said though, and uh, with the spare tire out of the way, what we're gonna need to do is just temporarily remove this heat shield as well. Just really frees up a lot of space. So to do that, we're gonna have a 13 millimeter nut there, and then two more just like it on the back side, right here in this area. So once we have those nuts free, we can slide this off and set it to the side for now. Now what we need to do is come over just above our rear axle and remove this factory Johns bumper. And to do that, we're gonna have a 15 millimeter nut on each side of it, just like that one. So we'll go ahead and get those removed. So go ahead and lower this and set it to the side as we won't be reinstalling it. So once we have that Johns bumper out of the way, we can remove these factory studs and what you can do is just grab a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry down on it a little bit. And they should almost kind of pop out of there, like so. so. I'll do that same thing to get this one removed as well. Now we can grab these universal clips that come with our kit. And these are going to get pushed inside of these openings here. So the way to do that, just line it up and push them back. They won't go back too, too far, and that's okay. We'll just get it in there and do the same thing for that one as well. Now we can grab our upper frame bracket and four carriage bolts, and we're gonna drop the bolts down through the square openings there in the corner. Now, when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that the plate, once we install it, you're gonna want this elongated hole here to face towards the front of the truck. And you're gonna want this side here with this U-shaped uh, cutout to face towards the center of our truck. So this side will be inboard. Well, with that being said, we'll take our carriage bolts, drop them through. And what I like to do Eventually, when we thread hardware on there to prevent these from coming up and kind of making it difficult, I like to take a piece of uh, clear tape here. And just kind of tape that carriage bolt to the bracket. That way it doesn't move around on us and makes things a lot easier uh, later on during the installation. 
So now we can grab our upper bracket and we're going to bolt it to those universal clips that we put inside of the frame rail there. Again, make sure the oblong hole is towards the front of the truck and this cutout uh, portion here is facing inbound. And we're going to bolt this up using these button head uh, cap screws here. So we'll take it, get it lined up and get them started. So once we get both of the bolts started hand tight, we can come back and snug them down. So once we have the snug, we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten the harbor down to the amount specified in our instructions. With these, I kind of like to alternate them just to help kind of pull everything up evenly. And I do want to mention from this point on, anything that we do torque down, you can find that spec in your instructions. Now we can grab our airbag. And if you look on one side of our airbag, there's going to be three fittings. Two here, which is going to hold on uh, our roll plate. And one here, which is going to be our air fitting. This is going to be the top side of the bag. The bottom side of the bag is only going to have uh, two threaded uh, fittings there. With that said, we'll start working on the top of the bag. So this side. What we're going to do is take the roll plate. Set that over. And then we're going to grab our 90 degree air fitting. Thread that in. And we're going to get it finger tight. We can take a half inch wrench and tighten it down an additional one and a half turns. So if we go, there's one and a half. Once we have that tight, we can secure the roll plate itself to the bag. And in order to do that, we're going to have to grab an additional bracket to set up here and get everything uh, joined together. So this is a bracket that we need to connect to the top of the airbag. Now when you do this, you do have to orient this in the correct fashion. So the way the airbag is going to sit under the truck is the fitting here is going to be on the inboard side. So this is going to point towards the center of the truck. You want your bracket here to swoop up this part there. You want it to come up like so. And we're going to use these two holes here to line up with our roll plate as well as the threaded portion in our bag. So we'll set it up. We're going to take these hex bolts, a split lock washer, and a flat washer. And I'm going to get both of these started hand tight. So get that one in there. Same hardware combo for this one here. Snug them up with a 916. And then we can come back with our torque wrench and fully tighten them down. At this point, we can go ahead and flip our bag over and start to work on the bottom side of it. So this side just gonna get a roll plate put on there. And then we can grab our lower bracket here. And if you see this side's gonna have some beveled edges there, you wanna be working with this side here. So what we're gonna do on the side here is we're gonna take our two really long carriage bolts and in these two holes, 
drop them down through. And just like the other carriage bolts, what I like to do, take that tape, just kind of push them to the bracket there, like so. And then we can install this to the bottom of our airbag. Now, when you're installing this, you do need to fashion it in the correct position. And you want this flange side to be on the opposite side of the airbag that our inflation fitting is. So in our case, the inflation fitting is on this side of the bag. So we have our flange side on the opposite. So we'll line that up. with our roll plate and our airbag. We're gonna take these bolts here with the beveled edge. We're gonna get both these started hand tight. When you're doing this, you really wanna make sure that these bolts are started straight. We don't cross thread them because they are just going into a brass fitting. So once you have them started hand tight, we'll come back Snug them down. And then completely tighten them using our torque wrench. Now we can go ahead and grab our lower bracket cup. And this is gonna go over one of those carriage bolts. And the slotted end there is gonna line up with this square hole in our bracket. So we're going to hold that in place and we're going to take one of our short carriage bolts, run that up through. We're going to take a flange nut and we're just going to get this snug by hand. So you want it to kind of hold steady, but you still want to be able to kind of be able to adjust it relatively easy like so. So now underneath the truck again, we can take our whole assembly and put it into position. Now when you're doing this on the driver's side here, you're going to want this carriage bolt to go between our hard brake line and our axle tube so it's positioned correctly. And there's quite a bit of wires and stuff up here so just make sure you're not hung up on anything. You don't want to pinch anything or uh, potentially damage anything. And then the way this is going to work is our top bracket there, those holes in it, are going to line up with those carriage bolts hanging down. So I kind of roughly get it into position. Verify that we can indeed line everything up and then we can start actually securing everything to our truck. So now what we'll do is grab our flange nuts and we're just going to get these started. Finger tight in just a few turns. And we'll do this to all four corners. At this point we can grab our U-bolt and the way this is going to work is this is going to wrap around our uh, factory leaf spring pack here. And when you do this, make sure you don't pinch any wires or anything. But we're going to take each end of the U-bolt and pass it through the lower portion of our bracket. And we want to use the hole at the top, the one that's closest to the uh, bottom of our truck bed, if that makes sense. So we'll push that through, and again, on each side, just take a flange nut and get it started hand tight. Then we can grab our axle strap here, and you want the uh, portion here where it's cut out, rounded to face up towards the bottom of our axle. This is gonna slide over these long carriage bolts. And just kinda hold it in place, and again, take some flange nuts and get them started hand tight. Now what we can do is just snug everything down. We're gonna first start with our U-bolt here. And when you're tightening 
uh, the U-bolt as well as these two carriage bolts, you want to kind of alternate from side to side, that way everything draws together evenly. Once we get those tight, we can then move to our bolts up here. Again, so I'll just grab my 9 16 get those snugged up. And last but not least, we can go ahead and tighten down our two large carriage bolts there. Now we can come back and tighten down all of the hardware that we just snugged up using our torque wrench. And then what we can do, that bolt right here that we left snug from earlier, we can go ahead and just tighten and torque that down as well. So once the driver's side airbag is installed, you're going to come over here to the passenger side and repeat that same process to get this one on. There's really only two differences. The first one being the long carriage bolt here towards the back of the truck. You're going to want that one to come behind our hard brake line there. So you remember the other side, the bolt uh, went in front of it. This one you want to pass uh, over it like so. And the only other difference is this side is going to get a heat shield. So the way this works is it just wraps around your exhaust and they give you some clamps that you can clamp to it. And that's really all there is to it. You want to position the heat shield, uh, you know, on the side where the airbag is closest to the exhaust to help keep it protected. At this point, we can start to route our airline tubing and you're going to cut the large bundle of it in half, which I've already done one for each airbag and I just want to mention when you cut this you don't want to use just your standard old pair of snips you want to use a sharp edge like this or even a tubing cutter tool and when you cut it you want that cut to be nice and straight and clean you don't want any burrs on it or anything like that because this is a common spot for leaks to occur and with a nice clean cut like this one you shouldn't have to worry about it the way the airline tubing gets connected to our fitting is super simple. This is just a push to connect, like a quick type fitting. And what you're going to do is just take your airline tubing, push it in. You'll kind of feel it almost set into place. Lightly pull back on it. A little bit of movement is normal. You just don't want the line to come out completely. And once that's pushed in there, what I'm going to do is route our lines towards the back of the truck. And I'll go ahead and do that now and show you the path that I took to get there. So I wrapped up routing our lines over here on the driver's side. It comes out like so. And along this factory wire harness here, when you do this, you wanna avoid any hot or moving parts. So you're gonna secure it, some zip ties along the way. Comes up along through here. And I have it zip tied up there next to that bundle of wire. And for now, I just have it hanging right here. Over here on the passenger side, one thing you're going to do before you uh, plug your airline tube into the fitting is take that thermal sleeve that's included and put that over. That'll help keep that nylon air tube protected from the exhaust. But I just routed it up and along the side of our frame rail, securing it every now and again with our zip ties. Comes up along through here and drops down right here as well. Now, once you get to this point, you can do a few different things. You can figure out a spot 
to mount your fittings. Um, some people will drill holes in their bumper uh, or their license plate screws. You can actually drill a hole up here, run these through, and uh, use this to secure your license plate as well because there are some nuts that will go on here. Uh, what I like to do if I'm using two fittings like this, uh, in many cases, is you can use a bracket that will attach to your hitch and you can mount them up that way. Or in our case today, our customer doesn't want to have the individual adjustability. So with two lines, you could have different pressures in each, <clears throat> each airbag on each side. And they're not concerned about that. They just want the same pressure on each side. And so what we're going to do is somewhere in this area, we're going to use a T-fitting like this to connect the two sides together. And then we're going to have one line that comes out with our shredder valve on it here. And we'll mount that up. I think I'm going to go through the license plate hole there. So uh, that way they'll have one air fitting. When they fill it up, both the bags will be at the same pressure. So right here is where I use that T fitting to connect our lines together. And this is just a push connect uh, fitting, just like the ones on our airbags. And if you want to do this setup, you can pick this up here at E-Trailer. But what I wanted to show you is I'm actually going to mount our inflation valve through that license plate opening. So I just drilled that hole out large enough to pass this through. And before you pass it through, you're going to want to put on a nut and a star washer. I'll just push it through there. Then I can take the other end and plug it in. Looks like it's a little long, so I'm going to have to trim it up. Again, make your cut, make sure it's nice and clean. And get that plugged in. So here's where our inflation valve came out through our license plate opening there. And what you're going to do is take the rubber uh, washer, place that over the end first, then a flat washer, and then a hex nut. We'll run this down by hand. And I'll just grab a half inch wrench and just get a few turns on it just to make sure it's snug. We don't really need to crank down on it by any means, but we don't want it vibrating loose at the same time. So once we have this nice and snug, we can then inflate the system to check for any leaks or any issues. So I'm gonna fill a bags up full of air. It's about 50 PSI. So to check the system for leaks, you can one, listen for those air leaks and a, another effective way is to use some soapy water and spray down all of your connection points. And you're going to give it a minute and what you're looking for is for bubbles to rapidly form. If that's happening, you know you have an air leak there and you need to repair it. To repair it, you would let the air out of the system, disconnect your line, recut it nice and clean, and reinstall it, fill it up full of air again, and make sure everything is sealed up. So in our case, this fitting here looks like we have no bubbles forming, so we know it's good. So I'm gonna do that same process for the rest of go. our fittings. So once you checked and made sure everything is good, can take your valve cap, go ahead, put that on, and then we can reinstall our heat shield as well as our spare tire the opposite way that we removed them. And that'll finish up our look at of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 air springs on our 2020 Ford F-250.